Welcome back to Wiseman Company, everyone. Ben here. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the IWI Galil 308. Guys, very excited about this gun. It is really hard to find a good semi-auto 308. AR-10s, they're a dime a dozen. A lot of them aren't great. And I mean, the majority of them aren't great out there. Uh, reliability issues, accuracy issues, the AR-10 is just kind of meh in my experience. There are some good ones out there when we're talking about semi-auto 308s. There's a SCAR, FAL, M1A. All of them have their little quirks, things to be desired. Um, again, it's just that constant struggle to find a good semi-auto 308. IWI has put out something really special here. It's, it's, it's a very viable option when we're talking about semi 308s. I've done Galil videos in the past, as you know, um, Gen 1, Gen 2, 7.62 by 39s. Big fans of those guns. Um, quality's top notch on those. You'll see similar quality on this 308 throughout the video, just top notch quality coming out of IWI. Before we get into more of my opinion on it and what, how it was shooting it for me, uh, let's talk about some specs real quick, all right? Specs. This is gonna be a 16 inch barrel. You can get it in other lengths, I think that 16 is the best option when we're talking about a semi 308 for this particular gun. Yeah, you're gonna get a little bit more powder, powder burn if it was longer barrel, but this barrel keeps the weight down. It's a manageable length. You can see there's a big old um, comp on the end here that comes with it. This does a good job mitigating recoil. The barrel does have a one in 12 twist and it is chrome lined, so you're gonna get that longevity out of the barrel itself. That's what the chrome lining is there for. It is a long stroke gas piston system. Again, aiding in that reliability. Everyone loves those long stroke gas piston systems, myself included. Weight on this guy, stripped down, no magazine. You're gonna come in and sub eight pounds, which is really good. Even with its current layout, how it's outfitted right now, it's not a very heavy gun. We'll get more into that in a little bit, but stripped down, nothing on it, no mag, no ammo coming in sub eight pounds. I think that's that's pretty impressive, honestly. MSRP, like any semi-auto 308, is gonna be on the pricey side. We're talking uh, $2,100 MSRP. It's, it's you, you pay for what you get, really, honestly. It's, it's more materials, it's more parts, it shoots a larger round. Um, it's gonna be more expensive than your standard AR-15. Just get over it, it is. This Galil does take standard AR-10 mags, so I got a P-mag in here. This is a 25 rounder. This is an excellent addition that you can just run regular AR-10 mags. You can find these things everywhere, anywhere from five rounders to 25 rounders. Uh, quality and reliability, always top notch with Magpul. Um, I haven't tried any other like Lancer mags in it or any other AR-10 mags, just been using the Magpuls. No complaints, obviously, boringly reliable. So when you get this thing out of the box, it's gonna come pretty much like all the other Galils. You'll see uh, this grip and plastic magwell built into the receiver. I deleted that on my other Galils, on the 7.62 uh, 39 Galils. Uh, there is not a delete kit for this gun yet, so I didn't delete it. It's not a huge issue, it works. Um, it's not a problem, aesthetically, it just leaves some room for improvement uh, aesthetically that's it mag release is ambi so you can drop that mag from either side safety is ambi just like the other galils so you have a lever on the right side and you got kind of like a push button switch on the left hand side charging handle left hand side just like the other galils with that uh, dust cover that pivots closed and open as the charging handle reciprocates it keeps dust and grime from getting inside the gun uh, it's spring loaded it'll just close up when the charging handle is pushed forward but when the charging handle is moving it just presses that little hinge out of the way dust cover comes down allows the bolt and charging handle to move freely has your fixed iron sights on here like all the gen ones do gen twos they deleted these fixed iron sights I don't know if that was a great idea. I kind of like the fixed irons. I'm not an iron sight shooter by any means. They're decent backups if you need them. Um, they're not in the way. And I think more than anything, they give the Galil a really cool look with those fixed irons on there. Like I said, the Gen 2s, they deleted the fixed irons. 
you could throw on a set of fixed irons if you wanted to because it's a flat top. But all these Gen 1s are going to have that iconic uh, fixed iron front and back on them. For those of you that don't know, the Galil kind of falls into the AK family. A lot of similar similarities, and I mean a lot, very similar to the AK with a few differences here and there. A lot of great videos on YouTube. If you want to get into the history of the Galil, go check those out. This is not my gun. Um, this is Roy Palmer's over at AAA Guns and Ammo. Roy Palmer is also a contributor on Hatchet Cast over at Barrel and Hatchet. Go check them out. Great guys over there. Work with them, buddies of mine. Uh, so this is Roy's Galil. He's been looking for one for a long time. This fell into his lap at a good price, so he snatched it up. These are pretty hard to find right now. Um, Gen 2s should be flowing out the door right about now. I haven't seen one in real life, but they are advertised on the website and I've seen them on the Instagrams. So they're out there. Gen 1s though, hard to find. Uh, this is actually a, the only one I've seen in real life and shot in real life. Not my gun. Um, I did have some input on what we did to it. Starting at the rear, this is an A3 tactical stock. Use this on other guns, you've seen it before. Great stock, has the SIG knuckle on here or hinge and this lays nice and flat and clears the charging handle. My sling's just getting in the way, but it does clear the charging handle. And you could get different cheek pieces for on top of it. So if you need a little bit higher cheek rest, you can add that in. If you want to delete it, you can delete it all together. Uh, rubber butt pad here on the back. Great stock, A3 Tactical. Those guys are super cool, making a lot of good stuff. Uh, braces included, not just stocks. Uh, so go check them out. Got that on the back, KNS. Pick rail adapter, again, so I can add any stock or brace I wanted to this as long as it uh, attaches to pick rail. That's a staple on all my gliels. So the other two gliels got that KNS on the back as well. No delete kit. KNS makes a delete kit for your 7.62x39 and your 5.56 gliels. No delete kit for the 308s. Wish they did because I would delete the plastic. Just a personal preference. Um, but that's what I would do. Up top, we have a Steiner 1-4 to in an American Defense mount. This is very underrated glass. This glass is great. It's the P4XI. Very clear, big eye box. The, it's daytime bright on the little dot inside of it. Great piece of glass for this 308. Moving forward, we got a Midwest Industries rail on here. Got rid of the plasticky quad rail that was on it through this M-Lock rail on here. Very cool rail. Goes the length of the barrel almost and has M-Lock on it and a little flat up here for M-Lock if you wanted to put anything. Really slim rail, very comfortable, gives it a cool look. On the outside of that rail, I have a hot pocket from Lunar Concepts, mitigate that heat, it is a piston gun, mitigate that heat and uh, gives you a little grip, a little texture, a little flare color. Uh, these are sold on our website. Last but not least, got a Harris Bipod on the front and this is attached to pick rail. But this is a kinetic development uh, QD mount for M-Lock. So I can pop this off and put it back on very, very quickly. Just snaps into the M-Lock slots like that and you're in business. So Harris Bipod on a kinetic development pick rail that uh, just kind of clicks into place really easily. So if I do need to get rid of the bipod, I can do that very, very quickly. Okay, let's talk about performance. This gun grouped decently. It's a semi-auto 308. It grouped decently. I'll roll in some groups here, have some ball ammo, have some better quality ammo here, that, that, that Norma stuff. Um, decent groups. I'm not the best bench shooter in the world, as I always say, so take it for what you will. These groups that are, are at 100 yards with using that Steiner 1-4 to four on top. So if you're looking for <laughs> dime-sized groups at 100, you're not going to get it out of this platform. I would look at a bolt gun or maybe a semi-auto that's got a really nice match barrel in it. Um, that's just not this gun. It's just, you're not going to get that out of this, this rifle right here. And that's okay. That's not why people usually pick up guns like this. They usually, they want a gun that's going to throw a heavier bullet, reach a little bit further. Um, that's what they want out of the gun. They don't need to shoot uh, the wings off a fly at a thousand yards. Would, would that be nice if it was capable of that? Sure. But... Usually they want to, with guns like this, they want to destroy cars, brick walls, cinder blocks, uh, soft targets, and they want to do it fast, and they want to do it repetitively. So that's what these guns are for.
Reliability, no surprise here. This gun will just chuck brass. I mean, gets it far away from you. You're never gonna have to worry about rolling on top of it and burning yourself because it tosses it to the next county over. Um, it really hucks them out of there. Didn't shoot this gun suppressed. Don't re recommend shooting it suppressed unless you got an adjustable piston from KNS or something like that. Uh, it's just not gonna run suppressed, particularly with supers. Uh, so I didn't try it suppressed, but I know um, from reading about it and using the other Galils, they are overgassed and they are gonna beat themselves up if you put a suppressor on it or you're just gonna get double feeds. Just doesn't work out for you. So, didn't suppress it. Uh, reliability was good, unsuppressed, and again, because it is just bombing brass out of there, getting rid of it, um, chewing up steel case, brass case, all sorts of ammo. Uh, that was a big win in my mind. Again, because a lot of the semi-auto 308s out there reliability is, is not great. That usually rears its ugly head within the first one to 500 rounds on a semi-auto 308. You'll get malfunctions, short strokes, over gas, double feeds. Um, so to have a semi-auto be reliable in 308 is a big win, a huge win. Trigger on this bad boy wasn't bad. It's, it's not great. It's just like the other Galils, a little bit mushy, too stagey. Um, there are other options out there. I think you can find, I think you can find replacement triggers for around 200 bucks. Don't quote me on that. Um, I would not recommend replacing the trigger on it. I think it's good enough for what it is. Again, this isn't like a precision bolt gun. Uh, and I don't think Roy will end up re replacing the trigger on it. Um, but just know that there are options out there. In my humble opinion, I think it's good enough for what this gun does right out of the box. And last but not least, m moving around with the gun, manipulating the gun. This gun is fairly light for a 308. It was a breeze to shoot. That break at the front really mitigated recoil. Uh, the accessories we added to this made it very comfortable, very ergonomic. If I could change the pistol grip, I would, but again, it's a part of that one piece plastic unit that they stick on the Galil, so I can't change that. Um, but it's not a bad grip, really, it's not bad at all. And using this around structure, on barricades, prone, unsupported, was really not bad at all. And to finish things up, in conclusion, I'd say this Semi-Auto 308 is probably my favorite available right now. I've shot SCARs, FALs, you see, I'm sure you've seen the M1A videos. This one right here makes the most sense if you want to step up a caliber and you're tired of using 5.56, or you just want something a little bit bigger in the old portfolio. This gun was great, awesome, love it to death. Roy picked up a winner here. I'm gonna try to borrow it as often as I can. Uh, just a, a great option if you want a semi-auto 308. Like I said, that using those AR-10 mags, that, that, that was a great touch because you can find these everywhere. It doesn't have a proprietary mag. You're gonna get the reliability out of the magazine. You already got the reliability in that long stroke gas piston. Guys, this is the ticket if you want semi-auto 308. Um, let me know down in the comments if you think I'm crazy. I'd like to hear from you, but I think this is, this, is, this is number one in my book right now. It really is. If you've shot one, jump down in the comments, let me know. I think it's a great option, I really do. Uh, can't wait to shoot it more. You'll probably see it in future videos. Uh, it'll be around. Again, it's not my rifle. It's Roy over at AAA Guns and Ammo. He's a contributor at Barrel and Hatchet. Go check those guys out. Great content over there. Guys, questions, comments, again, leave them down below. Be happy to answer them. My name is Ben. Thank you for watching. Go to wisemancompany.com. That's the best way to support us. Thank you for all that support. We'll see you on the next video.